This is CGTN, China Global Television Network. It's estimated that more than 90% of Africa's historic artifacts are not on the continent today. Instead, they're displayed in some of the most prestigious museums across Europe or have found their way into private collections. In 2017, the president of France, Emmanuel Macron, made a commitment to gradually return stolen African artifacts from France, naming Senegal and Benin as the first recipients. Similarly, a growing number of European countries, as well as cultural institutions like UNESCO, are now moving towards launching similar restitution processes. These artifacts are priceless, but what value do they hold for the younger generations in Africa today? As the debate carries on and some artworks slowly find their way home, what more needs to be done to bring it all back and also teach African youth their value and cultural importance? On this week's show, I'm joined by a panel of experts to explore this long journey home for Africa's lost artifacts. I am Liu Feifei. Fei. Welcome to Talk Africa. conversation about returning African artworks that were looted during the colonial era has been going on for many years, and some of these precious artifacts have found their way home. However, some people in Africa question whether our younger generations still understand and value them. My colleague Deji Betamosi brings us more. On November 10th, France handed back 26 royal artifacts which were looted from Benin during the colonial period, stored in special boxes for now. The government says a museum has been built where the artifacts will eventually be kept and displayed. In next door neighbor Nigeria, it's a similar story. A number of the country's stolen artifacts have been returned, and many more are expected to be returned in the coming weeks. But not everyone is overly excited by the return of the artifacts. Some uh, very, very uh, top intellectuals visited me uh, yesterday, and I was giving them a lecture on culture as an instrument for sustainable development. And I, when I was giving that lecture, I asked them, how many of you have ever been to a museum in Nigeria? Only one adult out of 25 raised his hand. <laughs> well, look, these are the kind of people you want those works returned to. They don't, have, they don't, they don't value these works. Yemisi Shilon is ranked among the world's top art collectors and is by far the largest private art collector in Nigeria. He says other than the value of the artifacts, storage is also a big issue. We don't have the technology for carbon dating. We don't have the technology for thermolysis analysis. We don't, have the, uh, we don't have the storage space. Go down to some of our museums in Africa. I'm not going to be specific about any particular country. So we have a problem. We have been indoctrinated to believe that these works are demonic, that we should distance ourselves from, from those works, and yet we are clamoring for those works to be returned. Those works will suffer if they come down here. But the Nigerian government has pushed back on suggestions it will face a struggle to store the items, insisting it has the capacity to do so. The government is working in partnership with many organizations to provide museum infrastructure in the country. When the artifacts are returned, we would definitely know how to preserve them. Plans are on the way to construct a museum in Nigeria's Edo state to accommodate the Benin bronze works that have been returned to the country. But Shilon says rather than push for more works to be returned, African countries should adopt a different approach. We should sit down and agree with those looters that, look, I, I agree or recognize our legal title to these works. And if you recognize our legal title to this work, then we should insist that you should pay us royalty on an annual basis until when we have the ambience, the environment, to treat these works the way they should be treated. It's not, it's even part of our own program that when these artifacts are returned, we would probably have them exhibited even outside Nigeria. Then we also can decide as I want to appropriate, where to loan it 
and at what terms and conditions. Despite the divided opinion about it, the campaign to return the stolen artifacts appears to be gaining momentum. DG Bademasi, CGTN, Lagos. Joining me to discuss this emotive topic are Professor Suleiman Bashir Dian, Director of the Institute of African Studies at Columbia University, Dr. Jonas Tinius, an anthropologist based in Berlin, and Prince Yamisi Shilon, grand donor and chairman of the Museum Supervisory Council at the Yamisi Shilon Museum of Art, Pan Atlantic University, Nigeria. Welcome, gentlemen, to Talk Africa. Professor Dion, let me come to you with this first question. It's no secret that much of Africa's artifacts were stolen, oftentimes violently, from the continent during the colonial era. But why is it so important that these artifacts be returned now? This is not the first time that they are being uh, uh, requested. Uh, ever since African countries became independent, because obviously they are important as uh, heritage, uh, artistic heritage, but also uh, uh, memory. Uh, these objects tell the very uh, history of the continent. They tell uh, uh, its, uh, its different cultures. And this is the reason why it is important that uh, uh, they, uh, they are returned to, to Africa. Uh, Africa is the, probably the only continent where uh, uh, um, whose uh, uh, heritage is outside. If I want to look at African art, I better travel to, to France, go to uh, the Jacques Chirac uh, Museum or to the British Museum or elsewhere. This is a totally abnormal situation. So it is absolutely crucial that uh, uh, these objects be returned to where they belong. Dr. Tinius, many people credit the French president Emmanuel Macron for giving real momentum to the return of these stolen artifacts back in 2017 when he called for the restitution of Africa's artworks and artifacts that were currently held in France. Now, do you agree with this assessment? And now it's been four years. Have we reached a tipping point where there's real hope for the return of Africa's artifacts? President Macron has been a voice that has channeled um, the activism and the um, important work that has been done by art historians, activists and artists over centuries, as Professor Diania just pointed out. We have reached a tipping point to the, uh, to the extent that European nations have understood that it is of utmost importance if Europe wants to maintain credibility on the world scene, if Europe wants to maintain um, a critical reflexivity of its own past, that it needs to engage in acts of reparation and acts of restitution, but not just of particular objects or of certain sums of money, but as Phil Winsar and Benedict Savoy point out, of a more wider relational ethic between um, continents, between former colonies and former colonizers. And museums are now playing a major role, not just in mediating, but actually in also um, being projection screens and, and being attacked rightly um, also for the systematic um, refusal uh, to return. Um, there has been a long list of restitutions that dates back decades um, from the Axum Obelisk in Italy to the planned restitution of Benin bronzes from 2022 onwards. Um, and colleagues uh, such as Benedict Savoy, such as Dan Hicks and others have done fantastic work on showing um, just where these are distributed across um, Europe. Now, Prince Shilon, of the seven European countries that colonized Africa, can you help our audience to understand which countries play the most prominent roles in this historic injustice and what positions are they on today in terms of returning Africa's stolen art? Uh, the greatest um, um, impact in taking away our, our ethnographic and cultural objects uh, was Britain. In 1897, they made a major run on the palace of the Oba Benin and cutted away thousands of um, very rich um, cultural objects in the palace and also uh, in the workshops of the um, bronze casters. And it was Britain that sent out these works by selling them by exchanging them to other parts of the world. 
But my attitude is that, yes, they want, we, want to, we want them to return the works, but we on our part, we have to be better organized and coordinated in preparing for those works. And that is where my own contribution is. Our preparedness in terms of capacity, in terms of technology, in terms of orientation as a people. Uh, because we want to ask ourselves, what have we done with the ones that were not carted away? What did we do with them? And that is the question um, I always ask. It's very easy to be emotional about these works to be returned. What have we done with the ones with us? That is, the, that is my question. Professor Dion, let me come to you now. While many of the pieces are in some of the most renowned museums in Europe, right, like the Louvre, the British Museum, and the whole world knows about them, what about those that are in private collections? Are any actions being taken now to assess the full scope of this and work on their return to Africa as well? We must say that action is being taken just now. So that is the reason why as these private collections uh, are private precisely, it is very hard to assess uh, uh, what they are in the first place, where they are, and who should be uh, 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 held accountable for uh, having uh, objects that may or may not have been stolen. Because we should not be just using the word stolen uh, without uh, taking into account the fact that colonial space was also a space of trade and post-colonial space as well. So uh, we need to be very careful in assessing exactly what the, statu the status of these objects are and look at their provenance, identify private, private collections, etc. So it is much easier, of course, to deal from state to state, which is what is being done now. You, you know that already a certain number of objects have been restituted by France to, uh, um, to Benin, to the state of Benin, 26 objects that had been looted, and this has been assessed historically, looted from the palace of King Beyonzin. So these are important steps that have been taken, but it is much easier when uh, the history of uh, the looting is known, as is the case in uh, for, for these objects that I mentioned, and also the Benin bronzes that are being restituted by Germany to, 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 to Nigeria. For private collections, it is obviously much more difficult. But once the momentum is there, one could think that these private owners may come forward and probably uh, explain the provenance of the objects that they are uh, holding right now or restitute them. Prince Shilon, let me ask you this. As we all know, you are one of the largest collectors of African art here on the continent and probably in the world. Many of the works were also bought, but for fractions of their real value and then resold subsequently for vast sums of money to other bona fide buyers uh, in Europe and North America. Now, for this la latter category, the buyers who paid lots of money and thought they were legitimately buying art with good provenance, do they have any claims to the artworks that they now own? The problem is if you buy stolen item, no matter how long the down the line the stolen item is, you can use the doctrine of um, sequestration to get at that um, stolen object. If the work was originally stolen, whoever buys a stolen object buys a very um, um, wrong title, doesn't buy a genuine title. And so it will be easy for those who are tracing those works to prove that the origination of those works was through dubious or whatever means. And therefore, it will be easy to recollect those works. However, whoever has bought in the market over it, um, those works are now sued if, they still, if they are still alive, and if they are not, to the estates of those who sold them those works to recover you know, their money and subsequent damages. But the truth is that if a work has originally been obtained dubiously or through illegal means, it does not confer legality on the subsequent collectors. 
Dr. Tinius, let me come to you for the next question. Now, the process of returning Africa's stolen art is quite complicated. It's actually a monumental task, right? Even when there is the willingness to return the pieces, uh, for example, in France, they had to actually pass a national law, as I understand it, to facilitate this. Can you kind of outline for us this process, kind of a checklist of what the countries need to do to repatriate the art? Well, this was precisely what uh, aforementioned Benedict Savoy and Felwin Sa's uh, restitution report, as it became called, um, has tried to outline. Um, it really outlined a whole series of steps, uh, uh, especially three of them, by which um, we can, uh, European museums, European countries can instigate these processes. First and foremost, and this has already been pointed out uh, by my colleagues, inventory lists of items have to be made available. Claims cannot be made if it is not sure where certain items belong, which is why provenance research is so important, but also which is why museums have to provide infrastructures, digital infrastructures, that make it possible for individuals to conduct research on their collections. Only then can we really know what is actually where. A second step, which is often a problem, is that a lot of these items, by nature of being in public national museums, have entered particular nations um, patrimony. That is to say, they've become part of an inalienable um, system um, of cultural goods. And what the report suggests is that one quite simply has to go through the process of making exceptions for individual items. And then of course, we enter a whole series of other conversations that um, are beyond um, the capacity of individual museums or provenance researchers, which is the determination of the rituals of restitution of rehabilitation of resocialization um, rituals of reception um, and this is really um, this has to be done on a case-by-case -case basis because we're dealing with a whole series uh, my colleagues are much better positioned to speak about this of object subjects we're dealing with um, human remains in part and we speak about repatriation reburial so this is then really where the process actually begins um, the process of possible reparation or even just the process of talking about um, um, the injury in the first uh, place. On that note, we'll take a short break now. When we come back, we'll continue the conversation on returning Africa's lost artifacts. Stay tuned. Each day, there are millions of stories. Each one can open new perspectives new possibilities wherever you look we are there to see discover explore we put the pieces together to find what really matters to you all around the world all around the clock our reporters are at home across the globe from our headquarters in beijing and production centers in washington nairobi and london China Global Television Network. Stories from across the globe, reaching people across the globe. CGTN. See the difference. Welcome back to Talk Africa. My panel of experts are still with me. Uh, we have Professor Suleiman Bashir Dion, Dr. Jonas Tinius, and Prince Yamisi Shilon. Now, before the break, we looked at the process of how to return Africa's lost art. Now, we're going to turn our attention to focus on the impact of this on African culture, and more importantly, what needs to be done to bring these artifacts uh, artifacts home. Okay, now Professor Dion, the debate about African stolen art has shifted. Most people do believe in some kind of restitution. If you look at Europe, it's rich with its own art history and it's studied extensively and permeates through every aspect of their daily lives. And this forms a contemporary part of their culture today. But what about Africa? Has the loss of stolen artifacts had an impact on contemporary African cultural identity? I would say yes and no. And the reason why I'm saying that is obviously when one's uh, uh, heritage is uh, uh, outside, uh, there is something missing, obviously. That is true. 
But then African creativity never stopped. African art, contemporary African art is flourishing. And this is true. If you go to different museums uh, uh, around the world, you can see now contemporary African artists being very productive, being very creative. And this is important. The resilience of the African continent is manifest here as well in its artistic creativity. But what could expect that uh, uh, these objects being returned could add to that creativity in a way uh, which is to, to, to boost interest for art. Imagine, I can imagine very well, uh, restitution of uh, African artifacts uh, in different African countries creating some uh, demand from schools. I could imagine teachers taking their, their, their students to museums to uh, reconnect with their own art and who knows what this is going to create as an impact. But again, one should not be forgetting that African creativity itself uh, has not been destroyed by uh, uh, the disappearance or uh, uh, these objects being missed in the, on the African continent. Prince Shilon, I would love to get your uh, perspective on the status of Africa's cultural identity. I will answer that question from two dimensions. One, what impacts uh, the restitution of works that have been taken from Africa will have on the people in Africa? Two, what is the attitude of Africans to their own heritage? Now, the first one is, yes, government is leading the drive for the return of those works. But I don't know to what extent the people in general are joining that drive calling for those works to be returned. Because you have museums around Africa which, are, which have some works, cultural objects that were not stolen since that in the colonial times. I don't know what they have done with those works. How far have they created activities to bring those works closer to the average man on the streets? I don't know what they have done to make those works become a very important part of the uh, people of the African continent. So those are the questions I have. Now, in terms of the people's reception for those works, we, our, we have a problem, particularly in my country, I don't know of other countries, we have a problem with cultural objects, ethnographic objects. Many of our people distance themselves away from these objects. In fact, there is a particular language in here in Nigeria that regards museum as house of juju, Juju means uh, demons. So then I want to talk about the fact that if only we can all, in answer to those two uh, posers I gave, if only we can get our acts together and begin a mass orientation of our people, a reorientation of the minds of our people towards cherishing their cultural identity, then returning those words will mean a lot to, to us in Africa. In today's world of Western-centric globalization, how can younger Africans be encouraged to reconnect with this rich history? Well, this is the very goal of education. The three of us are in education. We are professors, and we know that people need to be educated to culture. I mean, culture is not given. There is no uh, reason why uh, a young Africa would be driven uh, towards uh, art more than young uh, Europeans are driven towards art if they are not educated in the first place in the uh, meaning and the value of art. 
So this is the reason why uh, uh, one could should not expect necessarily that uh, restitution would mean uh, uh, popular enthusiasm is in uh, receiving these objects. Uh, this is an important step to uh, educate uh, our uh, African people, in particular younger generation. And this is why I used earlier the example of teachers taking their students to museums and showing them the objects, uh, 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 explaining to them what their meaning uh, is. And this is what is done uh, universally in every uh, single uh, country, whether in the North or in the South. So education would be truly here the important word to be emphasized. So far, the demand to return stolen art has been driven by individual African countries. But now there's a momentum to build a coalition of African nations driven by young African artists and cultural influencers, if you will. They're known as the Restitution Crusaders. Do you think that they will be more effective as a group? Well, to say it bluntly, I don't think so. I think that the best way is to uh, make this issue a Pan-African issue. In other words, I believe personally in institutions, and I believe in the African Union in this particular case. Uh, and I would like the African Union to take the matter in its uh, hands and uh, uh, have a general African policy uh, when it comes to the restitution of these uh, uh, objects. Now, yeah, uh, having said that, obviously it is important that you have also artists, uh, activists, uh, be uh, uh, an important uh, uh, element here and be important actors. But when it comes to the process of restitution itself, this should be done from institution to another institution. Uh, for example, to come back to the question that you raised earlier, uh, returning objects to particular uh, um, ethnic groups or particular regions, etc. Well, let that be a national debate. Let the nations themselves decide. It is not up to directors of museum in the north to, to see uh, who they are going to give it back to. This is an international question, meaning it is uh, uh, dealt with by nations and let let's keep it that way it is already very complicated from nation to nation institutionally not to complicate it further by multiplying the the, the actors so yes i believe in activism in pressure in lobbying in making sure that things uh, uh, happen but then when it comes to the process itself this process has to take place at the uh, Pan-African level, and this is what my uh, personal uh, preference would be in this particular case. A very complicated process uh, in any event, but definitely worthwhile. And that's all we have time for this week, but a big thank you to all of our guests for sharing their insights. Professor Suleiman Bashir Dion, Director of the Institute of African Studies at Columbia University. Dr. Yunus Tinius, an anthropologist based in Berlin, and Prince Yemisi Shilon, Chairman of the Museum Supervisory Council at the Yemisi Shilon Museum of Art in the Pan-Atlantic University of Nigeria. Remember, we'd love to hear your feedback through our social media handles on Facebook and Twitter. You can also catch the show on our YouTube playlist. Do keep the conversation going and tune in again next week for more of Talk Africa. From me, Liu Feifei, and the team here in Nairobi, stay safe and see you next time. <laughs>